Good evening, all. Welcome to yet another session of our training on financial literacy. Today, we are basically going to discuss about lesson five, which is the rich invent money. But before we delve into that, I would like to briefly recap what we discussed in our previous lesson, that is lesson four, which was about um, the history of taxes and the powers of corporation. We saw in that lesson how tax was invented and uh, how the rich men are currently using tax in order to build wealth and also using corporations in order to protect their wealth. So for lesson five today, lesson five, like I said earlier on, is about the rich inventing money. So often in the real world, it's not the smart who get ahead, but the bold. So this lesson basically centers on the fact that the rich, your people who are considered wealthy in the society today are people who dedicate their time into inventing money. They don't just sit and work for money, and they equally don't steal from anybody who are engaged in illegal activities in order to get money. They are just financially literate and know how to make money. So basically, this would be our discussion for today. That is a rich inventing money. So we all have tremendous potential and we all we are all blessed with gifts. Yet the one thing that holds all of us back is some degree of self-doubt. It is not so much the lack of technical information that holds us back, but more the lack of self-confidence. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people are not confident in themselves. At times they may just literally say that. They have that self-confidence. But in reality, you'll find out that something out there, money out there, is controlling their life. Because most of their time is being channeled into working in order to earn money. It means they don't have self-confidence on them. They don't have self-confidence. They don't believe that without work, them working for money, they can still be able to build wealth. So some are more affected than others. Once we leave school, most of us know that it is not so much of a matter of college degrees or good grades that count. In the real world outside of academics, something more than just grades is required. I have heard it called many things, gods, balls, audacity, bravado, cunning, daring, tenacity, and brilliance. This factor, whatever it is leveled, ultimately decides one's future much more than the school grades do. Inside each of us is one of these brave, brilliant, and daring characters. There is also the flip side of that character. That is people who could get down on their knees and beg if necessary. One is not better than the other. It is excessive fear and self-doubt that are the greatest destructors of personal genius. It broke my heart to see students who know the answers yet lack the courage to act on the answer. Often in the real world, it is not the smart who get ahead, but the bold. Your financial genius requires both technical knowledge and as well as courage. It is, if fear is too strong, the genius is suppressed. Learn to take risks, to be bold, and to let your genius convert that fear into power and brilliance. It works for some and just terrifies others. For most people, when it comes to the subject of money, they would rather play it safe. I have had to feel questions such as, why take risks? Why should I bother developing my financial intelligence? Why should I become financially literate? And I answer, just to have more options. That is the simple reason just to have more options. You cannot clinch yourself to just one option. 
once something happens to that option, your entire world crumbles. So you need to be financially literate so that you can have more options. There are huge changes up ahead. In the coming years, there will be more people just like the young inventor, Alexander Graham Bell. There will be a hundred people like Bill Gates and hugely successful companies like Microsoft created every year all over the world. And there also will be many more bankruptcies, layoffs and downsizes. So why bother developing your financial intelligence? No one can answer that but you. Yet I can tell you why I, my, I myself do it. I do it because it is most exciting time to be alive. I would be rather welcoming change than dreading change. I would rather be excited about making millions than worrying about not getting a raise. This period we are in now is most exciting time, unprecedented in our world's history. Generations from now, people will look back at this period of time and remark at what an exciting era it must have been. It was the death of the old and birth of the new. It was full of Tom oil and it was exciting. So why bother developing your financial IQ? Because if you do, you will prosper greatly. And if you don't, this period of time will be a frightening one. It will be a time of watching some people move boldly forward while others cling to worn out life preservers. Land was wealth 300 years ago. So the person who owned the land owned the wealth. Later, wealth was in factories and production, and America rose to dominance. The industrialists owned the wealth. But today, wealth is in information. As in, in our current times, wealth is in in information, it is what you know that would create money for you. And the person who has the most timely information owns the wealth. The problem is that information flies around the world at the speed of light. The new wealth cannot be contained by boundaries and borders as land and factories were. The changes will be faster and more dramatic. There will be a dramatic increase in the number of new multi-billionaires there also will be those who are left behind. I find so many people struggling today, often working harder, simply because they cling to old ideas. They want things to be the way they are, and they resist change. I know people who are losing their jobs or their houses, and they blame technology or the economy or their boss. Sadly, they fail to realize that they might be the problem. Old ideas are their biggest liabilities. It is a liability simply because they fail to realize that while that idea or way of doing something was an asset yesterday, yesterday is gone. Cash flow classic is game designed to help people learn how money works. In playing the game, they learn about the interaction of the income statement with the balance sheet. They learn how cash flows between the two and how the road to wealth is through striving to increase your monthly cash flow from the asset column to the point that it exceeds your monthly expenses. Once you establish this, you are able to get out of the rat race and out onto the fast track. You can play Cash Flow Classic on the web at www.richdad.com and learn how money works. Some people hate the game, some people love it, and others miss the point. You can make millions simply by doing what the school system does not do. In school, most teachers lecture. However, teaching their games and simulations is the best. Look at games as reflecting back to yourself, what you know and what you need to learn. Most importantly, games reflect behavior. They are instant feedback systems. Instead of the teacher lecturing you, the game is giving you a personalized lecture one that is custom made just for you. The cash flow game was designed to give every player personal feedback. Its purpose is to give you options. If you draw the boat card and it puts in put you into debt, the question is, now what can you do? How many different financial options can you come up with? That is the purpose of the game. 
to teach players to think and create new and various financial options. Thousands of people throughout the world have played this game. The players who get out of the rat race the quickest are the people who understand numbers and have creative financial minds. They recognize different financial options. Rich people are often creative and take calculated risks. People who take the longest are people who are not familiar with numbers and often do not understand the power of investing. Some people playing cash flow gain. There are some people playing cash flow gain, lots of money in the game, but they don't know what to do with it. Even though they have money, everyone else seems to be getting ahead of them. And that is true in real life. There are a lot of people who have a lot of money and do not get ahead financially. Limiting your options is the same as hanging on to all ideas. And there is this story of um, a friend from a high school who now works at three jobs. Years ago, he was the richest of all his classmates. When the local sugar plantation closed, the company he worked for went down with the plantation. In his mind, he had but one option, and that was the old option, work hard. The problem was that he couldn't find an equivalent job that recognized his seniority from the old company. As a result, he's overqualified for the jobs he currently has, so his salary is lower. He now works three jobs to earn enough to survive. Financial intelligence is simply having more options. If the opportunities aren't coming your way, what else can you do to improve your financial position? If an opportunity lands in your lap and you have no money and the bank won't talk to you, what else can you do to get the opportunity to work in your firm? If your hunch is wrong and what you have been counting on doesn't happen, how can you turn a lemon into millions? That is financial intelligence. If that job you are waiting for, or if that contract you are waiting for is not forthcoming, what other option do you have in order to create money? That is financial intelligence. It is not so much what happens, but how many different financial solutions you can think of to turn a lemon into millions. It is how creative you are in solving financial problems. Most people only know one solution, work hard, save, and borrow. So why would you want to increase your financial intelligence? Because you want to be that kind of person who creates your own luck, who creates your own luck. There is nothing like another person being lucky. Anything that happens to you in life, was as a result of your thoughts and your actions. And not because you are blessed more than another person or because you are lucky. Rich people create their own luck, whereas the poor and the middle class only know one concept, the whole idea of work hard, save money and go. The disadvantage of working hard is that you will end up getting your physique or your body worn out within a short period. You will reduce your lifespan because every day you are stressing your body to work in order to make money. And the more you grow, the more uh, problems, financial problems you have, which means you will now be prepared to keep on working hard. And the problem with saving money is that if you save that money, you will not get any interest. But rather, the value of that money that you kept in the bank would even reduce due to inflation. And the habit of borrowing, it's not in, it is not in any way a healthy way to live. I mean, why should I be so terrified in the night thinking of how to pay back money I borrow? It's a cruel way to live life. Why can't you just live within your means while you're working towards improving your situation? 
but you cannot be having expenses that is more than what you are earning. That is the only situation or circumstance that can lead you into borrowing money. So you take whatever happens and make it better. Few people realize that luck is created just as money is. And if you want to be luckier and create money instead of working hard, then your financial intelligence is important. If you are, a, if you are the kind of person who is waiting for the right thing to happen, <laughs> waiting for that job, waiting for the, the, that destiny helper to come and help you, you might wait for a long time. It's like waiting for all the traffic lights to be green for five miles before you start your trip. Money is not real. Understand, money is not real. The poor and middle class work for money because they think money is real. While the rich man make money because he knows that money is not real. The more real you think money is, the harder you will work for it. If you can grasp the idea that money is not real, you will grow richer faster. What is money if it is not real? What you agree it is. Money is problem solved. So what you should be after is looking for how to solve a problem in the society rather than complaining about the problem. While others are complaining, you are looking for how to solve the problem. Once you solve the problem, money will follow because the people who are busy complaining will pay to use or enjoy the solution you provided. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind, our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth seemingly instantaneously. An untrained mind can also create extreme poverty that can crush a family for generations. The information age. Uh, in the information age, money is increasingly is increasing exponentially. A few individuals are getting ridiculously rich from nothing, just ideas and agreements. If you ask many people who trade stocks or other investments for a living, they see it done all the time. Often millions can be made instantaneously from nothing. And by nothing, I mean no money was exchanged. It is done simply via an agreement, a hand signal in a trading pit, a blip on the trader screen in Lisbon, from a trader screen in Toronto and back to Lisbon, a call to my broker to buy and a moment later to sell. Money did not change hands. Agreement did. But money was created. So why develop your financial gems? Only you can answer that. I can tell you why I have been developing this area of my intelligence. I do it because I want to make money fast. Not because I need to, but because I want to. It is a fascinating learning process. I develop my financial IQ because I want to participate in the fastest game and the biggest game in the world. And in my own small way, I would like to be part of this unprecedented evolution of humanity, the era where humans work purely with their minds and not with their bodies. Besides, it is where the action is. It is what is happening. It's hip, it's scary, and it's fun. That is why I invest in my financial intelligence, developing the most powerful asset I have. I want to be with people moving boldly forward. I do not want to be with those left behind. Well, putting money away every month is a sound idea. That is saving. It is one option. The option most people subscribe to. The problem is this. It blinds the person to what is really going on. It causes them to miss major opportunities for much more significant growth of their money. The world is passing them by. Where there is terrible economy, it is the perfect market condition for the investor. Instead of saving money, invest it. As people are giving properties away, buy it. Houses that were once like $100,000 would be like $75,000. But instead of shopping with local real estate agents, begin shopping at the bankruptcy attorney's office or the courthouse steps. In these shopping places, a $75,000 house could sometimes be bought for $20,000 or less. For $2,000, which was loaned to the purchaser from a friend of his for 90 days for $200. The 
The purchaser gave an attorney a cashier's check as a down payment while the acquisition was being processed. The purchaser ran an, an advertisement advertising the house for $75,000. That house, uh, the house uh, that is worth $75,000, advertising it for only $60,000 and no money down. The phone rang hot and heavy. Prospective buyers were screened, and once the property was legally his, all the prospective buyers were allotted to look at the house. It was a feeding frenzy. The house sold in a few minutes. The purchaser asked for a $2,500 processing fee, which they gladly handed over, and the escrow and little company took over from there. The purchaser returned the $2,000 to his friend with an additional $200. He was happy, the buyer was happy, the attorney was happy, and the friend was equally happy. So the purchaser sold a house for $60,000 that cost him just $20,000. The $40,000 was created for money in his asset column in the form of a promissory note from the buyer. The total working time there is just five hours. So you can see within five hours, $40,000 was created without any money coming from the purchaser. That is simple financial intelligence. So you can literally create money from nothing, even from zero nera. If you just know how to fix the puzzle, things will come out. So now that you are on your way to becoming more financially literate and skilled at reading numbers, I will show you why this is an example of money being invented. So if you are not currently looking at the screen, kindly look. If you are not looking at the screen, kindly look at the screen. I want to show you something. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can see from the income statement of the purchaser. This is the income statement here. We have $4,000 in the income statement. Expenses, his expenses there are taxes and mortgage payments. Okay. Under his balance sheet, you can see under his asset, he has $40,000 as a promissory note. And then the $20,000 he gave as down payment, making everything $60,000. But the interest he got from that transaction is $40,000 in form of a promissory note. So that $40,000 is now generating $4,000 income every month from that promissory note which is his asset. So you can see he has no job. There is no source where money came in. But he was able to start creating $4,000 into his income statement monthly from this $40,000 promissory note, which is his asset. The only liability that he has is mortgage. So you can see how money has been created. $40,000 is created in the asset call. Money is invented without being taxed at 10%. Uh, money was invented without being taxed. At 10% interest, $4,000 a year in cash flow is added to his income. So that is just a simple illustration of how many has been created from nothing. So the $4,000 a year was sheltered through his private corporation. Much of it goes to pay for his company cars, gas, trips, insurance, dinners with his clients and other things. By the time the government gets a chance to tax that income, it's been spent on legally allowed pre-tax expenses, money 
has been created, which is not taxed. Consider the other way around. How much or how long will it take you to work under a job receiving salary to be able to gather forty thousand dollars? How much would, how much income would you have to earn if the government takes fifty percent in taxes? How long would it take you to save forty thousand dollars? Just look at the screen. From your job, you receive the salary. Under your expenses, you have taxes. That is, in the absence of any other form of expenses, and which you know it can never be true. There are other expenses that cut up this salary. You need to buy clothes, you need to buy a car, you need to do that. At the end of the day, how many years would it take you to save $40,000? How much is your salary? So except if you are thinking of subsequently expanding into illegal or immoral activities to get money. Otherwise, if you are someone who is honorable and you only receive what you worked for, then that salary can never make you rich. That is just a simple explanation. So this was a simple example of how money is invented, created and protected using financial intelligence. Ask yourself, how long will it take to save $40,000? Would the bank pay you 10% interest on your money? No. And the promissory note is good for 30 years. So it means every year for that 30 years, $4,000 would be going into his income column from that promissory note for 30 years. And the purchaser even hopes that they never pay him his $40,000 so that he can just be receiving that passive income of $4,000 yen. Because another reason is that he would also have to pay tax if they pay him the principal. And besides, the $4,000 paid over 30 years is $120,000 in income. So you can see from nothing to $40,000. And in the next 30 years, it becomes $120,000. I have people ask what happens if the person doesn't pay. That doesn't happen, and it's good news. That $60,000 home could be taken back and resold for $70,000. And another $2,500 collected as a loan processing fee. It would still be a zero down transaction in the mind of the new buyer, and the process would go on. The first time I sold the house, I, and the first time the purchaser sold the house, he paid back the $2,000. So technically, the purchaser have no money in the transaction. The purchaser return on investment is in infinity. It's an example of no money making a lot of money. In the second transaction, when the purchaser is sold, he would have put $2,000 in his pocket and re-extended the loan to 30 years. What would the purchaser's return on, uh, return on investment be if the purchaser got paid money to make money? Of course. You know that that is not even feasible. So it is very good that you develop your financial intelligence. And you don't need to have any fear that you must have money before you can create money. You can see a practical example of how many, a lot of money have been created from zero naira, to zero dollars. At times you hear people say, you can't do that here. That is against the law. You are lying. I hear those comments much more often than, can you show me how to do that? The mark 
is simple. You do not need algebra or calculus, and the escrow company handles the legal transaction and the servicing of the payment. The purchaser has no rules to fix toilets or to unplug any of those facilities because the owners do that. It's their house. Occasionally, someone does not pay. And that is wonderful because there are late fees or they move out and the property is sold again. The court system handles that. It may not actually work in your area because the market conditions may vary. So it must not really be real estate, but you just have to understand that money can be created from nothing. So even without zero naira, even without any amount of money, you can still create money. Which one sounds harder to you? Work hard, pay 50% in taxes, save what is left, your savings then earn 5%, which is also taxed. Will take the time to develop your financial intelligence. Harness the power of your brain and the asset company. The choice is yours. If you use option number one, be sure to factor in how much time it takes you to save $40,000. Time is one of your greatest assets. So don't treat it for money. Use it to create money. Your success reflects the importance of a strong financial foundation, which starts with a strong financial education. Investments come and go. The market goes up and comes down. Economies improve and crash. The world is always handing you opportunities of a lifetime, every day of your life. But all too often, we fail to see them. But the idea, and the more the world changes and the more technology changes, the more opportunities there will be to allow you and your family to be financially secure for generations to come. So why bother developing your financial intelligence? Again, only you can answer that. I know why I continue to learn and develop. I do it because I know there are changes coming. I would rather welcome change than cling to the past. I know there would be market booms and market crashes. I want to continually develop my financial intelligence because at each market change, some people would be on their knees begging for their jobs, just like what happened during COVID-19 period. Others, meanwhile, would take the lemons that life hands them, and we are all handed lemons occasionally and turn them into millions. That is financial intelligence. So you can use several vehicles to achieve your financial growth. It can be real estate, small cap stocks. Uh, you can use your intellectual property and any other good source of creating a solid base asset. But I would recommend that anything that you want to engage yourself in, if the opportunity you see is one that is too complex and you do not understand the investment, please simply do not engage yourself in it. Look for an opportunity that you are familiar with or you can carry out inquiry from people who are already familiar with such kind of business before you invest in it. Simple math and common sense are all you need to do well financially. If people are not vast in the subjects of financial intelligence, that is accounting, investing, marketing, and law, then obviously you must follow standard document, which is to play it safe, diversify, and only invest in secure investments. The problem with secure investments is that they are often sanitized. That is, they are made so safe that the gains are less. Most large brokerage houses will not touch speculative transactions in order to protect themselves and their clients. And that is a wise policy. The really hot deals are not offered to people who are novices. 
often the best deals that make the rich even richer are reserved for those who understand the game. It is technically illegal to offer speculative deals to someone who is considered not sophisticated. But of course, it happens. The more sophisticated I get, the more opportunities come my way. Another case of developing your financial intelligence over a time, over, over, over a lifetime, is simply that more opportunities are presented to you. And the greater your financial intelligence, the easier it is to tell whether a deal is good. It's your intelligence that can spot a bad deal or make a bad deal good. The more I learn, and there is a lot to learn, the more money I make simply because I gain experience and wisdom as the years goes on. I have friends who are playing it safe, working hard at their profession and failing to gain financial wisdom, which does take time to develop. An example of how fast gains can be made are 100,000 shares purchased for 25 cents, each before the company goes public. Six months later, the company is listed and the 100,000 shares now are worth $2 each. If the company is well managed, the price keeps going up and the stock may go to $20 or more per share. There are years when um so you can basically see and then there are instances whereby $25,000 can be converted into a million less than a year due to stocks and shares so it is not gambling if you know what you are doing it is gambling if you are just throwing money into deal and pray the idea in anything is to use your technical knowledge, wisdom, and love of the game to cut the odds down, to lower the risks. Of course, there is always risks. It is financial intelligence that improves the odds. Thus, what is risky for one person is less risky to someone else. That is the primary reason I constantly encourage people to invest more in their financial education than in stocks, real estate, or other markets. The smarter you are, the better chance you have of beating the odds. If you will reread why investments such as these are high risks for most people, you may be able to set your life up differently so that the ability to take $25,000 and turn it into $1 million in a year is low risk for you. I, my personal basis is real estate. I love real estate because it's stable and slow moving. I keep the base solid. The cash flow is fairly steady, and if properly managed, has a good chance of increasing in value. The beauty of a solid base of real estate is that it allows you to take greater risks as you do with speculative stocks. If I make great profits in the stock market, I pay, I pay my capital gains tax on the gain and then reinvest what's left in real estate. Again, further securing my asset foundation. Great opportunities are not seen with your eyes. They are seen with your mind. Most people never get wealthy simply because they are not trained financially to recognize opportunities right in front of them. When you learn the rules and the vocabulary of investing and begin to build your asset column, I think, you will find that it is it's as fun a game as you've ever played. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. There is no fail. That thing you are considering as fail is learning. So you can either win or you learn. Because if it did not work out this time, it means there is something that you are missing. You go back, learn more, come back, and it happens. But you need to also have fun because most people never win because they are more afraid of losing. This is why I found school so silly. In school, we learn that mistakes are bad and we are punished for making them. Yet, if you look at the way humans are designed to learn, we learn by making mistakes. We learn to walk by falling down. If we never fell down, we would never walk. The same is true for learning to ride a bike. 
I still have scars on my knees, but today I can ride a bike without thinking. So come to think of it, if mistake was a bad thing, the first time that I climbed that bike and I fell down, by school system, it means I shouldn't ride the bike again. I should continue with using my feet to walk. The same is true for getting rich. Unfortunately, the main reason most people are not rich is because they are terrified of losing. Winners are not afraid of losing at all, but losers are. Failure is part of the process of success and you must notice. People who avoid failure also avoid success. I look at money much like my game of tennis. I play hard, make mistakes correct, make more mistakes correct and get better. If I lose the game, I reach across the net, shake my opponent's hand, smile and say, see you next week. There are two kinds of investors. We have packaged investment, we package investors and then we have creative investors. For the first one, which is packaged investors, it is the first and most common type, which involves a person who buys a packaged investment. They call a retail outlet, such as a real estate company, a stockbroker or a financial planner, and they buy something. It could be a mutual fund, a stock or a bond. It is a clean and simple way of investing. An analogy would be a shopper who goes to a computer store and buys a computer right off the shelf. For the second type, creative investors, they create investments. These investors usually assemble a deal in the same way a person who buys components builds a computer. I do not know the first thing about putting components of a computer together, but I do know how to put pieces of opportunities together or know people who know how to do it. It is this second type of investor who is the more professional investor. Sometimes it may take years for all the pieces to come together and sometimes they never do. It's this second type of investor that my rich dad encouraged me to be. It is important to learn how to put the pieces together because that is where the huge wins reside and sometimes some huge losses if the tide goes against you. So if you want to be the second type of investor, that's creative investor, you need to develop three main skills. The first one is for you to find an opportunity that everyone else missed. You see with your mind what others miss with their eyes. For example, a friend brought about this rundown old house. It was spooky to look at. Everyone wondered why he bought it. What he saw that, uh, what he saw that we did not was that the house came with four extra empty lots. He discovered that after going to the title company, after buying the house, he tore the house down and sold the five lots to a builder for three times what he paid for the entire package. He made seventy-five thousand dollars for two months of work. It's not a lot of money, but it sure beats minimum wage, and it's not technically difficult. The second thing you need to consider is to raise money. The average person only goes to the bank. This second type of investor needs to know how to raise capital. And there are many ways that don't require a bank. To get started, you can learn how to buy houses without a bank. It was the learned skill of raising money more than the houses themselves that was priceless. All too often, I hear people say, the bank won't lend me money, or I don't have the money to buy it. If you want to be a type two investor, you need to learn how to do that which stops most people. In other words, a majority of people let their lack of money stop them from making a deal. If you can avoid that obstacle, you will be, millions ahead of those who don't learn those skills. There have been many times I've bought a house, a stock or an apartment building without a penny in the bank. And it is something you can also do. The third thing you need to consider is how to organize smart people. 
you know, intelligent people are those who work with, who hire a person who is more intelligent than they are. When you need advice, make sure you choose your advisor wisely. There is a lot to learn, but the rewards can be astronomical. If you do not want to learn those skills, then being a type one investor is highly recommended. It is what you know that is your greatest wealth. It is what you do not know that is your greatest risk. There is always risk. So learn to manage risk instead of avoiding it. So basically, that will be all for our discussion for today on lesson five, which is all about how the rich invent money. So God willing, by tomorrow, we we'll would round up with the lessons. That is the last lesson, lesson six, which is about the concept of working to learn rather than working for money. So see you tomorrow, same time. Thank you.